And we continue our discussion on the web as we examine the role of women um, on a global scale. Uh, Martha, just to continue our discussion, you talked about how a majority of the population in New Mexico are in fact women. Um, and I'm wondering what are the systems we need to put in place to make sure that we can give access to this women to transition to those roles that they want to do on a global scale? Well, I think we need to pay attention very, very carefully in New Mexico to job training. A lot of our public money goes into job training, as it should, but we don't have right now any measures of who is getting trained for what jobs. Are women being able to move into, say, a company that does business internationally or not? We don't know that. Very often we find that the job training goes by traditional sex roles, and that's not necessarily good. Also, there may be men that would like culinary training, and we don't give them that either. So I would say that we need to pay attention to job training. We need to pay attention to keeping our kids in school. The dropout rate for girls is higher than for boys in many counties in New Mexico and teen pregnancy is part of that too. And we need to pay attention to all of that, whether we're talking about the global stage or the local job market, because one is increasingly dependent on the other. As Marina has said, the business communities are moving globally and we need to pay attention to that. What is it that we need to put in place in terms of systems or practices that will help us take that next step and take care of some of the problems that you've just mentioned? Well, I'm married to an accountant and he is very fond of saying, if you can't count it, you don't know what you have. So we need to have better measures, better reporting. What is going on in our state? Where is our education money going? Who specifically is it benefiting? Are we paying attention to the lower income sectors as much as we are, say, the Cadillac High Schools. Uh, again, in the job training, who's getting the training? What are they being trained for? Uh, when we give money to a corporation to create jobs, let's talk about what kind of jobs, how long did they last, and who got trained. I would say that education is of utmost importance. And, you know, in this project that we are doing, this Global Leadership Women on the World Stage, there will be a screening. We are partnering with Intel and Bosque Prep School to screen a movie, Girls Rising. And so it's about the importance of education. And so that's also what we're doing with that lecture series. It's about learning about those new trends early because uh, this is not quite, in my opinion, covered extensively by the media, with the exception, of course, of uh, New Mexico in Focus. <laughs> that is in the avant-garde. And, and that's why we are here. Yes, exactly. Having this discussion. Yes. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's about educating. That's what is happening. They are doing it with seven women, Minister of Defense. You can do that, too. And just to, to continue on that path, I remember in an early, early discussion... Seven women, you, seven children. <laughs> <laughs> well, that and, and one other point about creating a conducive environment, mm -hmm. both culturally and intellectually, to foster mm -hmm. uh, global leadership for women. Mm -hmm. Expi just elaborate on that as well. Uh, <laughs> you mean what kind of cultural and you know, intellectual environment do we need to have? Here in Albuquerque. Here in Albuquerque, well, in my opinion, you know, that's what I really invest almost all my time with the Albuquerque International Association is that, you know, we talk recently so much, and we've been talking about that sometime before, about Innovate Albuquerque, that what we need for Albuquerque is that core, the heart of the city that is architectural and business that will attract everything and will really change the city. And in my opinion, that it's, it's great. It's absolutely, I, I just subscribe to this idea. But architectural and business core is not enough, that we need to have that cultural and intellectual core in the city. We need to develop that further. And that's what we are trying to do, you know, by presenting those lecture series and many, many other events that, that, that we do. And staying on the various topics that will be covered in the lecture series, Martha, can you give us an idea of what you'll be talking about? I believe that is the last lecture of the series. It is. Uh, I will be trying to summarize uh, briefly what's gone before in the series, and then my topic is passed to glo global leadership. 
And there are many. Uh, as we know, you can be a, a leader in government, you can be a leader in corporation, you can be a leader in nonprofit, which is very, very important. But to go back to a little bit of the earlier discussion about women who are heads of state, what we know, and people don't like to hear this, but what we know is that where women have risen in parliaments and to heads of state, very often, much more often than not, there are quotas. And quota in the United States tends to be a bad word. And what I say is, look, we already have quotas. They're just not written down. And those quotas say we're going to have one woman vice president in a corporation out of 32. Uh, we are going to have five women who are heads of Fortune 500 uh, corporations. And we're going to have two or three girl slots in the national cabinet, but no more. Those are quotas. They're quotas for men. And we need to look at it. Take the, the Parliament of Norway, for example. They started with a quota for 40% of the uh, Parliament would be female. And when they reached that quota, guess what that 40% did when they got into Parliament? They passed a law that said, if you want to do business in the country of Norway, your corporation will have 40% female directors. Can we adopt that here in the United States? I think it'd be an uphill pull, but it would be a good idea. Well, you know, I was uh, speaking earlier that, you know, I see it as a global trend and, you know, global trends, they're complex and they're always controversial, like with globalization. There are people that support it and like it. There are people that disagree with it and hate it. And, you know, the same here, you know, there would be a lot of uh, not just likes and dislikes, but discussions about that. And I think mm -hmm. it's just wonderful to talk about that. Let's, let's talk about that. And I want to go back to something that you had mentioned, Martha, that, you know, we have to work on different levels. We talk about job training, about keeping kids in school. Um, we also find that we have a lot of women who enter the workforce in different professions in various industries, but then there seems to be such a lag to get them to the top. Um, what is causing that lag and how can we fix it? What's causing that lag is flatly a lack of social support for families. In the United States, we have 12 weeks of unpaid family leave. We are behind all of the industrial world in that way. And when going back to that national gender, uh, global, going back to the global gender gap index, what we find is the countries at the very top, the Nordic countries, have paid family leave for women and men. And they have a rule, many of them, that is a use it or lose it. In other words, the family, both workers, can take the leave. And you can't say, well, she is going to take the leave and he is going to continue to work because that creates an imbalance in terms of her progress at work. So he has to take his half if, if the family's gonna take advantage of it at all. But it is social supports for families. It's paid family leave, it is sick leave. Most people don't realize in this country, unless you're a low wage worker and then you know it very well, that we have no pregnancy leave. There is no mandate at all for pregnancy leave in this country. Again, we're way behind internationally. And it's no, but also there is. I agree with what Martha said. But even with with the leaves, look, I, I had my leave in Russia. Actually, I took two years, and I could have taken three years. And it was during the Soviet times. And uh, it's also a problem because you're out of the workforce for exactly. two years, and you need to catch up. But you can catch up. You know that's the whole thing. And I sort of support that. Yes, I can. Yes, yes I can. can. Attitude. But, Just but don't give up. You know, go back. If your husband and, also had yeah. the opportunity to stay home, which many men want with new children, but he would also have, if you will, the same penalty mm -hmm. <laughs> that the woman has in terms of having taken time off. We know in the United States that any woman who drops out of the workforce for a year, it takes 15 years to catch up. There is data to support that. And that's too long. 
we ought to have more family-friendly policies for women no, and men. No, I, I, and I agree remember with that, that when yeah. we factor in single-parent families, yes. then it becomes even more difficult even to, more to make difficult. that work. Uh, right. in, in the absence of having that additional family member to divvy up some of the responsibilities. Um, I, I want to sort of bring the, the discussion to a conclusion in terms of trying to look at what we can do in our communities, um, how we can all make a difference in our homes, in corporations. What can we do now, tomorrow, so that we can have, we can con continue elevating women to those global roles? What are some of the things that we can do, uh, well, Marina? Here in New Mexico, you know, I'm doing what I can, you know, it's just, I think we all can do certain things, you know, I believe that in, on a big scale of things, I personally cannot change the world, but I can do what I can where I am. And so I chose Albuquerque International Association, I look at it as education, and so that's my part. I contribute to education, and I'm, you know, trying to find the themes that really are directly linked to what is happening in New Mexico, not just in the world or not just in the United States, and uh, do it here. So that's, that's my, my personal example. So education, uh, bring your families to attend some of these lectures. Oh, so yes. Get some thinking and doing something. Uh, anything you'd like to add, Martha? Well, I would. I think that our businesses here in New Mexico, and many of them have international ties, and they're doing business in other countries. I know the Chamber works very hard on global exchange in that way. I would like to see those companies showcase some of their female talent to school kids, to boys and to girls. Uh, go out, and maybe they already do. I don't have any kids in school, so I can't say. But go out and say, we're going to have uh, a day where you can talk to a woman, for example, who is an engineer in an international corporation. Find out what she does and how she does it and how she balances that work-family conflict. If we saw more of that kind of thing, I think a kid, whether he be male or she be female, could say, you know, I could do that. And that's important. I think that's a really important point you make, is really to provide visibility for these role models. Yes. And take them to schools, provide a, a stage or a platform so people can see that members in our community are doing amazing things. So on that, I want to just thank you both for joining us a little bit longer so we can have this discussion on the web. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.